Hello, everyone. Thanks for stopping by our table of, of disappointment. disappointment. This is How They Got Away, the show where we discuss the unsatisfying endings to your favorite unsolved or unpunished true crime and corporate greed stories. I am your host, Kelsey, with my co-host, Annalise. And tonight we are joined by our two guests, Stephanie and Anna. Tonight we are covering a true crime New England not quite favorite, but well-known story, particularly to our Massachusetts listeners. This is the kidnapping and murder of Molly Bish. Maggie and John Bish moved to Warren, Massachusetts from Detroit, Michigan. Ooh, Detroit! <laughs> and one of the reasons they actually made this move was because of an abduction of a young girl nearby. So they decided that Detroit was maybe not the safest place for them to raise a young family. This would unfortunately be not quite ironic, but wouldn't save them, I guess you could say. Spicy, nervously. <laughs> Molly Bish was born August 2nd, 1983. So she's like, she would have been about 10, 15 years older than this. Okay. Oh. Her family and friends said that she could be shy around new people, but once you Aren't got to know her, honestly, honestly, once you got to know her, she was really funny, which is me. That's me. <gasps> this is all of us. This is all introverts, of us. and then I think we're really funny. We're introverted extroverts. Like if you don't know us, you're not going to really get much. But as soon as you know us, you're not going to hear the end of it. <laughs> she was beautiful and kind, and I have a photo of her, so we can take a look at that. And I feel like she looks like literally. You went to high school with a girl like this. She looks like somebody. Yeah, or else. you went to summer camp with or a girl like this. You went to like summer this. camp, especially yes. that second. In the second photo, she's in, there's like a forest yeah, in the background. The picture, which is a little more dated. She looks like she has like a oh beaded God, necklace or something. Photo. Yes, windswept hair. That classic. is like summer camp. That is classic summer camp vibes. <laughs> and she was met, had many friends, and she was had the kind of personality that made people want to be around her. She was the kind of person that just attracted friends. She lit up a room. <laughs> she did though that is the class they always say that about people but it's honestly it's always the like the people who are bring the most light to the world that we lose it really is so at 16 she was an honor student and a talented athlete playing softball soccer and basketball she literally had a try athlete she had a sport for every season of the school year she girl really was getting it <laughs> yo this girl is she had a boyfriend, which is more than I can say for any of us in high school, <laughs> and um, many friends. Um, <laughs> we did. Um, doesn't count. Doesn't. <laughs> in high school and middle school, for context, I was something of a popular girl. You're the popular girl. <laughs> You're you an were. outlier. You were an outlier. You a liar. On I thin ice. had about nine different partners. Right? I wouldn't Mona say flowers. partners. <laughs> but like, can you say you had many <laughs> friends? Yeah. <laughs> what would you define as many? I was on friendly terms with, like, everyone in our crowd. Yeah, but that's not friends. That's acquaintances. I mean, I got invited to birthday parties. All right, so Stephanie was super popular, and the rest of us <laughs> were nerds. Hermits. <laughs> and the rest Honestly. Of us I here, also... You told me to my face, I can't imagine anyone disliking you. That's incredible. Also, yeah. I was a cheerleader and did not fit that cheerleader right. stereotype. <laughs> and then the hand in the same year, someone said I date anything with a penis. Oh, wow. Wow. Yo, so, the duality of man. Oh my god, there are two genders. There are two Throw it back to genders. the case. Oh so anyway, back to the case. So if you thought that her sport free every season wasn't enough, she also that summer decided that she would be working as a lifeguard at Common Ponds. Now Common Ponds was a nearby pond. Uh, I had a pond nearby where I was growing up. Common Ponds Work. about the same size, mm -hmm. like a little bit of a mile. It's a pond, so there's like a uh, her brother, John Jr., actually had worked there previously. I think it was, like, something like three years, three summers previous, mm -hmm. like, over and over again, like, all three summers. And then, so he showed her the ropes. He showed her where everything was, how to do it. So she knew what she was doing, where she was. And she grew up in this area, so she knew this pond pretty well. Mm -hmm. And she had been working there for one week when this happened. One week. Oh, I remember this case now. Now you remember this case. I do. It's very tragic. I do. My The neurons went... <laughs> so on the morning of June 27th, 2000, so if you remember when, like, high school lets out for the summer, mm -hmm. that's, like, she'd barely been gotten out of school. Yeah. And she'd been going into her senior year, so she didn't, she barely made it out of junior year before this happened. She received some bad news that her friend had actually been hit by a car and was in the hospital. 
That's and, horrific. But it was too late to call into work. She was almost on her. She had to go. So it was too late to call in. So she decided to do the responsible thing and just go into work anyway, despite her friend being in the hospital. Which, like, for 16, that's, I was not a good worker at 16. I was, I have self-admittedly, I was not responsible. Molly was there. She was reliable, dependent, knew that people needed her at the beach. So her mom drove her to the police station to pick up the two-way radio that was being used, that was to be used in an emergency. So it was back before really anybody had cell phones. You, you know, it's there's no landline at the pond. You, you're not going to want to run to the nearest house every time there's an emergency. You don't want that. So you have a two-way radio. So she had a direct line of communication to the police this morning, and they didn't hear anything from this radio. Now she was running a little bit late. It was about 10 a.m. and she was supposed to be there beforehand to set up. And swimmers were going to be there any minute. There was some sort of activity scheduled, mm-hmm. like, a little bit after 10. I'm, I imagine, like, 10, 15 or something. Yeah. That morning. So people were going to be there. So she told her mom she loved her, which is so sad. Nice. This would be the last time anybody saw Molly Bish alive. A little after 10, swimmers arrived, and there was no lifeguard on duty. It had literally been minutes since her mom dropped, had dropped her off. That is how fast it happened. One of the moms got on the chair and took over because they needed somebody to be on duty because there were kids in the water. So in the sand, by the chair, you know, the big lifeguard chair that's yeah. hot, high up, there were flip-flops, a backpack, the two-way radio, and an open first aid kit. That's going to come back later. So that makes me think, this, that's bad vibes. That's bad vibes. Yeah. It had literally been minutes. Clearly she was setting up. Now she's gone. Yeah. So that makes me think either somebody got really lucky to catch her in the few minutes between other people being with her, or she'd been watched for at least some amount of time to learn the schedule, find mm-hmm. out, you know, where where she would be and when. So her, her boss eventually was told that there's no lifeguard on duty. That's kind of something he should know. Mm-hmm. And he immediately called the police. Not her parents, the police. Honestly, my first call would be the police than the parents. Just in case. True, but also he didn't call her parents at any point. Oh, I would have. Yeah, that's that's a... He called the police, which is weird that he didn't call her parents at all. Didn't call them even first to see, hey, is she running late? Is there something going on? He but didn't. didn't they know that the, her stuff was there? I don't know how much he knew at this point. Okay, okay. So that's weird. Did he know something was off? Did he know this wasn't like her? So the police assumed she's 16. She probably played hooky with friends or something. I... She had never done anything like that before, but uh, she'd also been only working there a week, so maybe they assume, you know, they don't have a whole lot of record to go off of, but she's like an honor student and an athlete. Like, she has places to be all the time, and she gets where she needs to be going. But, and I'm, that that pisses me off, too, because shouldn't you, as a police officer, assume the worst and be wrong, that it was just some teen playing hooky, rather than waste valuable time if someone is actually missing? Like, as a taxpayer, I feel that I would be okay with that use of my tax dollars. Like, I feel like I wouldn't... I'd rather waste money. I would and, rather waste money looking yeah. for someone who's not missing than keep money not looking for someone. Exactly. That's how I feel about that. So yeah. 1 p- p.m. rolls around, mm-hmm. and there's still no sign of her. It has been three hours since anybody saw her. And now the police call her parents. They did not even know she was missing for three hours. That would make me live it. That makes me think of... I don't even know where to direct that anger. At the boss for not calling her parents? Yeah. At the police? Somebody? It makes me think of the Girl Scout case where they called their lawyers. First. Oh, that's crappy. So Maggie and John had no idea she was even missing for three hours, and the police still believed she'd gone off with friends, but the family was like, no, that's bullshit. Molly doesn't do that. She Mm -hmm. doesn't do stuff like that. And even the police weren't ready to, were saying, no, she's probably just gone off to play hooky. They weren't really looking for her. The family was like, no, we're going to start looking for her ourselves if you're not going to look for her. So they called friends, checked her boyfriend's house, checked her the friend in the hospital. Nobody had heard from her. Nobody knew anything. So then police began to theorize that she had drowned. Mm-hmm. Now, two-thirds of drowning victims are good swimmers. That is a statistic. So... You know, you might think, oh, she's a lifeguard. Like, how she, how could she drown? But, like, you know... T- it's it, possible. It's possible. Yeah. But the lifeguard, in the handful of minutes that she had been left alone, in good weather, in a pond... The pond is what gets me. Like, what is there for you to, like... Like, in the ocean, 
There's all there's stuff. There's stuff everywhere. Yeah. Like you get got hit by a undertoes. Undertoes. There's something there. Even a lake, it, like mm-hmm. it's deep. It could be a weird deep spot or a rock. Mm-hmm. It's possible, but it makes me think the police had no idea where she was. And also, was why would she have taken something. a dip while she's setting up? Like, yeah, and yeah, like, she's not sure to do. <laughs> if you're on job, if you're on duty soon. This just makes me feel like the police had no idea what happened to her and was were just looking for anything at that point. Now, and this is really sad, her brother John, who had been the lifeguard here previously, went to look in the water for her for him, himself. Mm-hmm. He spent hours in the he water. He did the damn thing. He did the damn thing. And they do teach you, like, body recovery, like, yeah. if you need to look in the water for as a lifeguard. Horrific, so he knew. But... Horrifying. Especially if you're looking for your sister. Mm. who had been in there for hours. Eventually, they had to make him get out so that the police could go in there with their boats. Poor guy. He'd been in there that long. They couldn't get him out. Like, oh, no. that's just depressing. He was driven. And so, and as you can probably guess, they found no sign of her. She had not drowned, at least not in that pond. So the day before, there had been a white Chrysler car in the parking lot. And the man inside had freaked the mom, Maggie, out. Mom instincts always listen. She's got them. You kn- like you know, you know, and she didn't. She didn't feel comfortable leaving Molly there alone until he had left. Mm-hmm. And he was glaring at her like the mom until he drove away. Like he was mad at her for staying and interrupting whatever, like just being there. Mm-hmm. Mad mm-hmm. at her for that. So twenty twenty hindsight twenty twenty. Always trust your instincts. Uh, if you think something's off, it probably is, and that is in no way to blame the mom or Molly or anything. But just like if something is off. Clearly, something is off. Yeah. So, Maggie, because she got a really good look at this guy, was able to give a description to a sketch artist. And now I know police sketches are supposed to highlight certain features to make you think about whether or not you know someone like that. But this sketch looks like Stalin. The cigarette. I'm still thinking about that Snapchat where you're like, hey, um, when, <laughs> Stalin. in this day and age, lots of men like to look like Stalin. Unfortunately, Why? I think no. the cigarette really helps to sell it. A little bit. Now, listen. Please go look up this sketch if you get a chance because it looks like a slightly older, slightly plumper Stalin. Like, from the iconic photo of Stalin, it looks like He Stalin. has, like, a thick, bushy the mustache, mustache. The mustache. The slicked hair, back hair. The cigarette definitely sells it. I don't know what the not hand say, makes it feel as hands, well. I don't know. <laughs> now, now that it's... So, there's a sketch. She's missing. They can't find her. They've looked in the pond. It's the only logical place she could be. So now it's clearly a missing person's case. The state police get involved. Now this is one thing that I will credit the Warren, Massachusetts police for doing is that they did not kick up a fuss to get getting the state police involved. Sometimes Bless there's up. Dis- jurisdiction issues and kind of essentially a pissing contest and the people who suffer in there are the victims who need to be found. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who finds who when, it matters that they're found it's I, not like a yeah. credit thing. I hate the police ego of we're going to solve this ourselves and not use outside. I know that stems from police departments used to get certain credit if they did certain things. It had to be within a jurisdiction. It's not as much anymore, but it's still there. It, it is. It pisses me off. But Warren, Massachusetts police were like, no, we are a small town. This has never happened before. We do not have the resources for this. So they called in the state police and they were fine with that. Molly's father, John Bush Sr., is quoted as saying, It is hard for me to describe that sinking, hollow feeling you have as divers are looking for your daughter, as dogs are combing through the woods and police officers are searching and interviewing people. And I almost immediately began to think that something horrible had happened. I went missing on my mom once for about 45 minutes because I took a friend's ride home. And she still talks about it and she talks about, she says to me, I hope you never feel the way I did in those 45 minutes. And I'm like, oh, so I can't even imagine what these parents are going through because that was 45 minutes, and this is hours, hours yeah. she's been gone. Mm-hmm. Her sister, been longer. who, mm-hmm. like, she, they were both older at this point, but he- Heather, the sister, mm-hmm. was older than Molly, and they'd only just started to establish an adult sister sibling relationship. She kept going outside that night to just see if the kidnapper had left her sis decided to bring her sister back because that they literally couldn't do anything but wait and hope. Can you imagine the just the just the desperation of just wandering outside every few hours and just hoping she's there mm-hmm. and she's not? And they had just started to make this like sibling like adult sibling relation. I hated my sister. <laughs> we I know hated you did. her. 
<laughs> so much as a child, and now we just vibe. We vibe. You guys have a wonderful relationship. We have a wonderful now. sibling relationship now. We did not as a young children. If, if you you fought. Like that, though, you'd be like that. <laughs> you have a great relationship with your sisters as well. Well, now I do. Yeah, now you do. Can you imagine that just getting thought. cut short just as it's beginning? Goddamn. Horrible. <laughs> I would shit my pants and die. But, uh, anyways. Part of so the next day, because it takes time to get all the resources, <laughs> it, it takes time to get all these resources together to make this mm-hmm. happen, mm-hmm. a full search is launched. They still found nothing. People tied yellow ribbons everywhere as a show of support. I believe yellow was Molly's favorite color, which is why they Aww. chose that. Aww. So the entire town is just covered in yellow ribbons, just kind of floating in the wind. Mm. Now, at this point, they understand that the beach is a crime scene, most yeah. likely. Yeah. But at, it's completely destroyed. It's destroyed. There had been swimmers all day. Yeah. It's hard enough to get evidence or fingerprints off it's of the scene. It's hard to keep people away from a beach. It is. And, yeah. like, they didn't even know, like, somebody was actually missing at that point. Yeah. So they just let people come in. It was fine. And it's hard enough to get DNA and fingerprints off of a scene that is mostly sand and water. Yeah. Yeah, that shit washes away. And there's a lot of stuff in the water. In the water. Now, we come back to the open first aid kit. That's interesting. And it made police think maybe there had been some kind of a ruse used. Like he she faked had, being like he Ted faked Bundy being, would do, like yeah. fake being injured. She's so like, that Oh she my help. hand, it's bleeding and that's why she wouldn't pick up the Yeah. That's why she left the radio. She got led away from the t- Exactly. And they at, in lifeguard training they teach they teach you like, Hey, you like if you see someone injured, you have an obligation to help. So um she's It's like how nurses have to stop. Yeah, exactly. It's road. not like if right. you see a nurse that is you're you don't have to go as a lifeguard if there's already a nurse there. Because like, hello, I am a lifeguard. I can help. <laughs> but they do I teach you, like, if you're a lifeguard and you see someone who's injured and there's no one else there, you are obligated to help. Right. And they, she had just done the whole lifeguard course, so I'm sure that was in her head when she sees this person who's injured and maybe she's feeling she's alone, but she's like, hey, this person is injured. It's my duty as the lifeguard on duty to help. Yeah. So they started clearing people with alibis and through polygraphs, the boyfriend, the boss. They also checked the local sex offenders. That's pretty common for this kind of, you know, missing persons case. Some of it even failed their polygraphs. But as we know today, they're not as accurate as we used to think they are. Yeah. It depends on which source you go with. Some people say it's 75% accurate. Some people say it's 80. You can't submit it for evidence. You can't. It's not submissible as evidence. So Mm -hmm. it's not as foolproof as we thought at the time. People used to hardcore believe in that. Yeah. And honestly, so many people had failed their polygraphs. They're like, mm, you can't all be involved. People still hardcore believe in that, too. Yeah. Yeah. At this time, hundreds of leads are coming in. Yeah. And a lot of them are false. Saying yeah. Molly was a runaway and had been spotted miles away. And this really slowed down the investigation. I hate when people just start calling into a number and, like, Just for the, like, attention. And, like... You know, sure. I'm sure some of them thought they really had seen Molly, but a lot of them just did it just to be involved. Yeah. And that oh. they have to follow up those leads because they have nothing. And that just wastes precious So they're time. looking all the way over there, yeah. and she could have... I'm not saying... She, who knows at this point? There's so little evidence, but who's mm-hmm. to say if they had not been wasting that time, if they'd been able to find her or more, yeah. you know, something? Mm-hmm. Now, you might remember the white car because I mentioned it like 10 minutes ago. Oh, yes, the Chrysler. The Chrysler. The Chrysler. Maggie saw the day before Molly went missing. Others had reported seeing the car, the white car, with a man matching the description at a cemetery a few days before. Now, there's actually a path between the beach and the cemetery through the woods. There's always a path. So it's connected. So there are people who were beginning to wonder maybe, you know, he was looking to, like, sneak in and then mm-hmm. be able to drag her out through the woods or something like that. Some even reported that the white car had been at the pond minutes before Maggie and Molly showed up. Presumably around the time Molly was supposed to start work, because remember, she was a little bit late this day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the sketch is considered pretty distinctive. It looks like Joseph Stalin. I would remember if I saw former leader of the USSR, Mm -hmm. Joseph Stalin, in Warren, Massachusetts. Uh, How do we know it's not him? Honestly. Stalin, what are you doing in my Massachusetts? (laughs) What are you doing here? Joseph! Oh, Joseph! You naughty boy. <laughs> so it's considered... Joseph being like, I think it's okay to kill one more person. One more. So it's considered <laughs> pretty distinctive, so most people will believe that if they did they did see this person, that if they said they did. Right. Yeah. Uh, like, you would know if you saw this guy. Mm-hmm. So the case went cold. 
Like it does. Nothing would be found until three years later. Just nothing. And and all this time, leads are still coming in. Of like, oh, I saw her here, or I saw her mm-hmm. there. So it's just false hope after false hope for the family. When a hunter found a piece of a blue bathing suit in the woods near Palmer, Mass., about 10 miles from Commons Pond. Police confirmed via DNA that this was Molly's bathing suit. So this kicked off another massive search, and this, I don't know if this is still true, but it was one of the biggest in Massachusetts history at the time. In the first week of June 2003, so almost exactly three years later, partial remains, a lock of hair, and a tongue ring were all found and confirmed to be Molly's on Whiskey Hill. Imagine, yes. One, there's one side of this where it's like they found something of her. Thank God. But, like, now there's absolutely no There's no hope. hope. But also, mm-hmm. could you imagine knowing that she had just been there so close all How for three did they miss years? her? Yeah. I don't, know. I know 10 miles is a big radius. I will give them that. That is a 10 big radius. 10 miles is big, but yeah. still. It's Over still, like, thank God to have, there's some people who they never find any remains, never find anything, and that's right. horrendous. Like, thank God they found that at least, but still not. It's Actually, they didn't even find that much of her. Out of the 206 bones that are in the average human body, they only found 26. Did they think animals got to her? Or did they think he, it has whoever been. did it took it as trophies? It's hard to say. It's been so, there is really only skeletal remains. Uh, I bet a lot of it was carried off. It's hard to say. Yeah, because what, three years? And there wasn't a whole lot that I found about, mm-hmm. like, why they think that it was, that they only found so many. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So her parent, and her parents had to wait for the remains to be released and to have a funeral. And imagine not ha- only having to bury your child, but you only get to bury literally less than half of them, which is just horrifying. And then they were also advised against cremation. I don't know if that's something they wanted or they were just told, you know. To keep the evidence, keep though the evidence. you don't want to cremate. I don't know if that was something they actually wanted or not, but I know they were advised against it in case they ever were able to exhume her for yeah. any more evidence. If my, like, for example, my mom wants to be cremated. I think I would want to be cremated, but I don't want to be cremated. If, Not if I was murdered. If something happened to me and we didn't fully solve it, I would like my body to be intact just to be safe. Exactly. Even if they do think they solved it. Just to be sure. Because you, because there's all those cases where, like, it's the wrong person. or the, I would just like my... Have, have the evidence. clause in my will in have case of murder. Just Under recording. suspicious... Is the clause. <laughs> Under suspicious circumstances, I would like my body not to be cremated so we can continue to have the evidence. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. she was... Buried with her prom dress and tons of letters from friends and family on August 2nd. Her prom dress? What would have been her 20th birthday. Oh. Oh. Just depressing. I'm just thinking of when you were saying that the sister would go out and wait and like three years, like. I'm sure they did that over and over. still kept going out. I'm sure. Hmm. So, suspects. Because no one was ever actually convicted for this case. Nobody ever was. And most of that is due to lack of evidence. Mm -hmm. There are about four main suspects in this case. Even though there are a lot of theories, there's really only circumstantial evidence for any of them. So number one on this lovely list of characters is Rodney Stang. I believe it's Stanger, but I heard it's Stagner as well. His face looks so tired. (laughs) Yeah, here is. He knows what he did. Knows what he did. Oh. That's what he looks like. Um, he looks like a sad old man. He has very droopy face. He's, he has very dark he circles, draggy like, under eyes. He looks like the grandfather of a walrus. <laughs> Unfortunately, Rodney Why is, that is so not, accurate. Rodney is not the kindly grandfather he seems to be. <laughs> I don't think he's kindly looking. In February, he looks like the man would yell to get off your lawn. That's lawn. true. In mm. February 2008, true, five years after Molly's body was found, he was arrested in Florida for the murder of his girlfriend, Crystal Morrison. And that is the thing. If he did do it and they were able to catch him at the time, Crystal would have been still alive. Mm, Crystal. He stabbed her 39 Jesus. times and what nearly the? decapitated her. So he's Ooh. violent. Oh, God. Shnikes. Now, Crystal's sister, Bonnie, came forward with some information that Get might it, be Bonnie. useful. Get it, Bonnie. Get it, Bonnie. Thank you, now, Bonnie. Miss Bonnie. Crystal and Bonnie had not spoken in almost 20 years, and then she gets a call from Crystal out of nowhere. Crystal started off saying she was sure Rodney was going to kill her that night. This Aww. was not the case. They had several calls, but 
she knew what her future held. But she should have gotten out. Too. I mean, I'm not blaming her. There's but a she, lot of yeah. domestic violence here that you're like, yeah. there were chances to maybe yeah. help her, but also it's such a hard And I, I don't blame her for not. It's so hard for so pe- hard. people who are victims of intimate partner violence to leave. Mm. Yeah. So I don't blame her, but also like. That's hard. There's so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. The rest of the call seemed to be in some kind of a code. Crystal told her in this first call that she needed the phone numbers for the FBI and the Massachusetts State Police, not the Florida State Police. And Mm -hmm. she wanted them both to come talk to her and Rodney about murders. Crystal called several times and commented on Bonnie's bird squawking in the background, asking about its name. Another, in another call, not long after Crystal had asked for the bird's name, she asked her again, again. Bonnie reminded her that the bird's name was Molly. And then Crystal gave a pause. And then Bonnie was like, oh. Because this was in this was national news. Everybody yeah. knew about Molly Bish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she felt that Crystal was trying to communicate that yeah. to her. I'm done with, like, codes and hints and stuff. I would... It would take me a minute. Well, I believe Chris was still in the house with Rodney at this time. Oh, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. for that it was safe. No, like, but I get it, your makes, point. it makes sense that she would do it. I'm saying on Bonnie's side, I don't blame Bonnie for, Bonnie for taking like, a minute to be like, like yeah, what are you like, saying? If you're, not, if you're not prepared for a code, if you're not you looking for a code, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you might think, what does some guy named Rodney in Florida have to do with Molly Bish in Massachusetts? Did he live in Massachusetts? He Florida? did live yeah, in Massachusetts yeah. around and he that time. Does have the facial hair? He has Ooh. facial hair. Facial he hair. He lives in be. Southbridge, Mass, about a twenty-minute drive from Warren at the time of the murder. Mm-hmm. He's an experienced hunter and finish, fit, fisherman. Excuse me, <laughs> fish. <laughs> he was fishing at the pond and saw her. <gasps> Now, the suspect profile at the time was a man, 18 to 50, age is the hardest thing to track down for these kinds of profilings, Mm. who was a hunter-fisherman who knew the area and was violent. So we've checked just about all those boxes. Check, check, check. Rodney was familiar with Commons Pond and Whiskey Hill, and he lived three-tenths of a mile from the YMCA in Southbridge. Yeah, Where see, yeah. Molly got her lifeguard certification. Ah, what the fuck? Now, the family hired several PIs over the years to try and get answers for Molly. Yeah. One of these PIs, a Tom Samsack, Shamsack, excuse me, what said this was, quote, very significant because it's a possible explanation of where Rodney Stagner may have first encountered Molly Bish. This was not a heavily populated area. It's quite possible that the two of them met there and she may have been chatted up. He may have extradited information from her, mainly that she was going to be employed at Commons Pond. So that's gross. That's really gross. Can we just, I just want to take a moment to note that the detective's name is the word sham in it. Shush, shush. Hey, yo. That is true, but I don't think anyone would be quite that. That's true. It's not really related to anything. You gotta make, you gotta make a note of a name. That's true. (laughs) So Tom actually visited Rodney in prison, because remember, he murdered his girlfriend. Little Crystal. And showed her. We miss her. Sorry, Crystal. And showed him a picture of Molly and said that Rodney wouldn't even look at it. He pushed it away. Because he feels guilty. So back to Bonnie. She actually had to clear out the house where her sister was murdered because she had no one else, which is terrible. On its own. Mm, Poor girl. She found Rodney's firearm license that had a picture of him from the time around the murder. And And she said he could have sat and posed for that that sketch. It was that accurate. She also found a bag of hair accessories that clearly didn't belong to Crystal. Ew. Like they were for children. Ew. 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 Ah! Ah! No! Which is really gross. They never go further into that, but that's just something that you need to know. (laughs) Rodney's brother, Randy, because if we're going to talk about Rodney, we have to talk about Randy, They're owned a... Brothers? The two first suspects are brothers, yep. And they have <laughs> such similar names, Rodney. Oh. Yeah, they really... Oh. This sounds really like a villain do. duo. It really it's, does. It's Rodney and Randy. We're out to go murder young Rodney. women. Oh, oh just wait. Misogynist. Oh, just wait. They, they, they sound one. like they belong Ronald. in Team No, <laughs> Rodney. <laughs> they do sound like Team Rodney. But yes... They did seem like a villainous duo out to kill little girls because there's another case. Oh, no. So Randy owned a white Chrysler van and moved to Florida with Rodney very shortly after the murder. 
Classic Randy. Now Randy, and here's his photo. He oh, looks the least. Randy. He looks like the least like the criminal sketch out of all of them. But like, well, only he just shave the hair down. He looks like the stereotypical. He's a very thin face. He's a very thin face. Would have a shotgun and stand on his lawn. He does. Yeah, he so like, he looks the least like the sketch. Your map pond. But he is connected to a different missing persons case. Nothing family? says innocence like being connected to a different similar crime, which is, you know, subjective, but still. Holly Peranian. I looked this up and I still screwed it up. Peranian. Nope, that's what we're going with. That's the best I can do. A 10-year-old girl from Sturbridge, Mass. No. Went to see puppies at a neighbor's house no, just down the no. street. My got puppies. separated from her older brother. And when adults came, because when her brother came home, and they were like, where is your sister? He said, I don't know. They went back to look for her, and all they found was her shoe. And this oh, is especially no. ter- terrible because they she had just been to a camp where they taught them what to do if you get abducted. And one of the leave things the is to shoe. leave a shoe. So they she got think she did she that shoe. on purpose. Smart girl. It didn't uh, help her. Three weeks later, they found her body in Brimfield, uh, Mass, off the Five Bridge Road. Can you imagine, like, being responsible for your younger sibling in, in I, a way you're I know. why? Yeah, I know. My, I have a happens. brother who's, like, three years old, older than me. Mm-hmm. And I know for sure there's been times where he's been told to look after me, and he just, like, didn't. <laughs> And then, like, in the end, it worked out, but can you imagine the child. one time? Yeah, he's a child. But yeah. I imagine he thinks about that every day. I, that I would. So, that's so it's, sad. And that's not to blame him. Anymore. He was a little kid. He did not know. Yeah. It's also just very sad to imagine be going to camp and them being like, hello, 10-year-olds. That's true. If you get in a situation where a stranger comes to take you, leave a shoe. I have, it may be useful. And I have, it still didn't work. I have the thing in my head now about, like, biting to leave your DNA. Yeah. It's just, it's horrifying what we have to teach our children to keep them safe at this point. Mm-hmm. Rodney had, a, ran, no, I'm sorry, not Rodney, Randy. Hey. Wow. Randy had been living in that area, living in the woods in a tent. Glass. That's not, <gasps> that's not fair. But, like, still. I don't want to judge people who live in a tent in the woods. If you want to do that, that's fine. Sometimes but like, you if have you're to. also creepy and you were found near where a body of a little girl was found, it's creepy and it's gross. So Oof. folks who hunted with both hunters, both brothers, because they're both hunters, mm-hmm. were said they'd hunted with them pretty close to the Five Ridge Road. So they knew that they both knew that area. And the brother of Holly, Holly's brother, had flashbacks of a man from that time. And when it was sketched, it looked a lot like Randy. Oof. So this, clearly this it, kid has been having suppressed trauma from this for a long time. This might be like, could it have been both of them? It's possible. If there's really only circumstantial evidence, there's no way to say. Yeah, because I'm wondering if like one of them lured her out, the other one grabbed her, and then they both. Possibly. So DNA evidence connected another man, David Puglio, to the crime scene, but he was never arrested and later passed away. And I don't know if that means they connected him to the scene, but not the body, or what. Here's what he looks like. I don't know why all of these men have such heavy mustaches. Sorry, I'm distracted by the picture below that. Oh, don't look at, he's next. (laughs) Spoiler alert for us. So they, and they actually exhumed another body that they would, thought was in connection to that case, too. But I couldn't find a whole lot of information on that. But, like, clearly to say, Randy's a weird, gross dude. And so is his brother, Rodney. Regardless of whether or not they were involved in Molly's case. So, Molly and Holly. First of all, rhyming names. Second mm. of all. Molly and Holly match Randy and Rodney. They were both. Unfortunately. They were oh. both blonde and, in fact, were the same age. They when, have a type. When Molly and Holly were both 10 and Holly went missing, Molly wrote Holly's family a letter, hoping they found her soon because the case touched her. Oh my god, Molly. Can you imagine? Which is a weird coinky dink. Don't think it's related. I think it's just, I don't think anyone could have known that. No. But it's just wild. And both girls, they were both blonde, and the abductions were very similar. Isolated area, no, adult, no adults around. Now, the third suspect, because there are many Gerald. terrible people in this area, is Gerald Best Batasoni. Batasoni, I believe it is. Batasoni. And here's what he looks like. Don't be thrown by the mustache. 
or lack of, we're coming to it. Okay. Does he have like um, very blue eyes? Is that what's happening? He looks like a he's lizard. Weird. <laughs> he's weird. Okay. Um, he's he's weird, sweaty eyes. Big head for some reason. Big. Uh, I, I don't know why. I do see the reptilian too. Like one of those ones that have like those pouches that like inflate. Um, yeah. when His, I don't know if it's the picture quality, but it, it looks scaly. I think that's just his stubble and lack of skincare routine. It's, it's the oh, yeah. it's the pupils <laughs> and the it's definitely skin the pupils. I did not notice that about the pupils before. It's but terrifying. Only. Once again, it must be noted we do not believe in body shaming. <laughs> once again today, I think what you've done with your hair flawless. I don't care if you look like a gross person on the outside, but Gerald Gerald Bastioni is a gross person on the inside. And it's bleeding out. It's bleeding out. If he's here, there's got to be a reason. I would like it to be an innocuous reason. No. He was (laughs) named as a suspect by P.I. Dan Malley. This man... Gross on the inside, gross on the outside. I like how you literally wrote gross man. I wrote gross man in my notes. Gross man, under that, sub point, pedophile. (laughs) Sub point. Subhuman. Gross, 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 gross. Used to make his wife wear children's underwear. Ew, no, oh my god, no, why would anyone get married to him? Ew. Exactly. He had connection to both Molly and Holly's murders, although at this point I will remind you that all the connections are circumstantial at best. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of them are really just gross man who was nearby. Ew. Which, Work. fair. He was named as a suspect in 2011. Okay. When he was already in jail for raping a teenage girl in the 90s <sighs> who was the daughter of a woman he'd been dating. No. Oh. She said he'd sexually assaulted her over a hundred times. And I believe And he admitted to this. Uh, he admitted to a lot of it. And he was obsessed with her. He would say he loved her in front of the police like when he would violate his restraining order against him, the restraining order she had against him, he would this is say an that. In awful front of the police. question. Horrible. But is the children's underwear he made his I wife do wear? Not know. I don't know. This was oh, this, or his wife is a different woman previous. from the woman he was sorry, dating at sorry, the time. Sorry, okay, got it, got it. But I don't, wonder if it was. I don't even the same style. Possibly, I don't want to think about that. <sighs> so he clearly had a history of stalking because he stalked this girl. And when Molly went missing, Gerald's known rape victim, whose name I don't have and I'm not going to share at the time, I'm sure she's had enough of being associated with Gerald, was living on Commons Pond Road So he could at have this time. just seen her while he was stalking another person. Yeah, he literally could have just seen her, like, had been, you know, rebuffed, gotten mad, seen a girl who was somewhat similar and went, sure, which is horrifying on its own. And he had connections to Holly's murder. The mother of the known victim, whom he was dating at that time, was a real estate agent who had a home listing right near Holly's grandmother's house. Holly's grandmother's house where she was staying at the time. Mm-hmm. So he also could have been there, and which is a weird connection. Yeah. Circumstantial, I will grant you, but mm-hmm. weird. The day Molly went missing, Gerald was working on his wife at the Times. I believe she is no longer with this man, which is good for her. I would hope. Mm-hmm. White Chrysler. Why is this town full of white? Why are they full of white Chrysler? Yeah, hello. It is the only car it's sold the at the dealership. Car. They have a dealership only white Chrysler. Like, oh, Toyotas, like Hyundai, like, and all that. You don't got them. Nope. Want a van? Want a I, don't, van? I don't know much about cars, but like, is there a reason? Like, are they particularly good for the roads? Are they cheap? Like, who knows? Probably someone who's good at cars, not us. And. He, to, he told her that he took it out for a spin out in Warren. She said that was weird because he did not have a license at the time. Ooh. Although that does not seem, the law does not stop a man like Do you like know Gerald. why he didn't have it at I the time? I do not know. I don't know if he just like, it expired or if he got it revoked. I do not know. Mm-hmm. But I know he did not have one at the time. Doing illegal shit. Well, honestly, shit. I really don't think uh, pencil pushing law like an administrative law like no. that would stop Gerald Battisoni. No. When news of Molly's disappearance broke and the sketch went out, he shaved his mustache and stopped going no. places. Nothing says innocence like changing your appearance dramatically and hiding from the general public after a small a young girl goes missing. But honestly, Nothing shaving the innocence. mustache probably an improvement. It was probably an improvement. I will give you bring you that. Now, this man loved true crime. As among his people say, sus. 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 
he would cut out newspaper clippings of brutal murders and leave them around the house and be like, this is how I'm going to kill you to his wife. So they did not have a good relationship at any point. I like true crime. This I know. Yeah, I love true crime. I don't love true crime in the sense newspapers. that I clip out newspapers or anything. I like hearing the stories of people I don't, I don't like save any of them. seeing anything from it. God. Oh. But he didn't want to talk about the Molly Fish case, though. No. 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 And he told his wife, too close to home. What are you talking Sometimes about? Sometimes there's no evidence, which seems like gloating to me. Mm. I did such a good job, because I know all this about true crime, mm-hmm. that you can't find the evidence. And now, because, he, you know, he'd had other problems with the law, mm-hmm. he it cited in police reports that he was known to impersonate a police officer. That's horrendous. Which is something he might have used to lure Molly in false sense ruse. of security. False sense of security, authority figure, could have used that as a ruse, most definitely. Mm-hmm. Now, his wife said that there was a certain way, and this comes back to this police sketch where the... Uh, the one where he's holding a cigarette. Yep. She said there was a certain way he'd hold the cigarette that matches this very specific way Maggie said the suspect held it. I guess he holds it with two fingers, and I guess they... I'm not a smoker, so I don't know. But I guess uh, most people don't actually hold it that way. They hold it between their pointer and thumb, or they just kind of, like, hold it with the whole hand instead of just the two fingers up, like a backwards peace sign. They said they he held it in a way that, like, people would mock holding a cigarette. Ah. And the wife oh. said she, that, like, pissed, him off, pissed her off. It's like when people say library, and you're like, that's wrong! It's like that. So, at the very least, we know he's a smoker. Okay. At the most, he holds it in this weird way. I, I don't think it's that weird. I mean, there's only so many ways to hold it. That's but true. it's weird that it's similar, and that they both mentioned it. It's something. It is. It's not solid, but something. And because Gerald is such a wonderful man, he used to buy drugs on Whiskey Hill. So you know he knows that area, on too. On Whiskey Hill. Whiskey Hill, which Another is area. where the body was found. It's One just name. Whiskey Hill and drugs. Like, that's just a Yeah, <laughs> it gets weirder. He Uh-oh. attempted suicide when the news broke that he was likely connected to Molly. He was in jail at this point. Oh, interesting. For a litany yeah. of offenses. He was trying to cop out. Not only Molly and Holly's case. He failed, because he's no good at anything. But he died in prison in 2014 without ever confessing to either. Okay, this is what I hate. Like, if he was and he did do this, why not just confess? There's so the last bit of power he has over anybody. I know, but it's one of those things where I'm like, just... So those are our three. And then, again, it goes quiet. Although they're getting leads and leads all throughout this. There's never a point when the Holly, the Molly Bish case closes. There, mm. It is still technically open. Thank you. I hate when they close I hate the when case. They close it. It goes, mm. The Warren police are not, they say they're still getting leads. They're still looking into them. Thank but you, Warren it, police. Thank you, Warren police. Now, in 2013, a construction of a racetrack was started near where Molly's remains were found. And the Bish family had hoped that there would be more evidence that they would be found during just construction. Mm-hmm. Um it's not clear whether or not they actually did find anything at this time, but they handled it really well. Maggie Bish said they were very, very conscientious and took it very seriously about what they could come across. Yeah. They also said that they'd be very happy and willing to put up a memorial for Molly. I don't know if they ever actually did. There, what, there is a sign in the town for her, though. That's good. It's, so, yeah, it's unclear if any evidence was ever found in construction, but it is worth mentioning. They also might have found stuff and they're keeping it close to the chest because, like yeah. I said, this case is technically still active. So in 2014, new evidence was found. A partial buried bag was found across the street from where Molly's remains were discovered, which makes me wonder, like, how thoroughly did they search? Thoroughly, I guess it's also three years since they found the. It was three years they found the remains, and so when they went to look around the area, that bag probably would have been buried for three years already, possibly. But they did find it in 2014. It could have been uncovered. I don't. Who's to say? But in this bag, they discovered. Plaid boxer shorts, similar to the ones that Molly had been found wearing over her bathing suit, as well as part of her shirt, I believe. Hmm. 2014, again, the same year, because they really couldn't do much with that. They, it's just more pieces. Yeah, yeah. You can't same test year, anything, right? The Just One Piece campaign started by the family, where one telling, getting the word out, telling people one more piece of evidence could help this investigation, asking people to come forward. Four people came forward with a person of interest. 
a man was staying at a campground nearby and was gone the entire day Molly was missing. He came back the next day and his face was bloody and covered in scratches. Which is great. that's not sketchy. And he was yelling about something bad that happened in the woods the night before. Yeah. Sounds like a great dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Has recently been bragging that he knows he's a person of interest, but they haven't come to talk to him. They are not really seen this man's name yet. I don't know if it was somebody that actually wasn't worth anything or yeah. if they're still, like, keeping some info close to the chest. Which is smart to do. It is you smart. don't want to scare them all. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to give out so much evidence that anybody could claim they did exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. You want to keep some things to prove. Right. Another yeah. piece that came out this time was about a white car that may be buried at the old sawmill campground. I can't figure out if that's the same campground the man was at or what, but it, there are a lot of campgrounds in this area, I guess. How would you bury a car without people noticing? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> the property isn't a campground anymore, and uh-huh. the new owner has it now and okay. they gave permission for the area to be searched ground penetrating radar revealed quote compelling ev- anomalies i don't know i don't know what in, in that screams car but maybe a friend of the previous owner of the land at and at the time molly went missing there was construction equipment at the campground that could have been used to bury a car hmm. So we don't know who this was, if it's related to any of the, the suspects I've mentioned so far, or if it's someone completely new. It's it's confirmed a white Chrysler, or is it just a con- car? Technically, it's a white car. Maggie says it was a Chrysler. Okay. I trust Maggie. I trust Maggie. I, I think she got the read. So I have one final named suspect. Mm-hmm. In June of 2021, another person of interest, Francis Sumner Sr., and here's what he looks like. I think he looks the most like the criminal sketch. Sans oh. mustache. Pretty similar. Although, honestly, three out of four of them look like this sketch. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I would not, before this, have said a lot of people look like Joseph Stalin, but after this, apparently they do. I feel like so many people look like so many people. I just it's like so that. Yeah. Everything fades together. So, Francis Sumner Sr. was named by the Worcester County DA. He died in 2016, but he, in prison for a different crime. Good heart. Uh, but he, again, looks really similar to the sketch and had a long history of violence, including kidnapping and aggravated rape. But he had, like, a 25-page long rap sheet of these and similar offenses, also including oh. harassment and probation violations. Oh. Francis Sumler, so, excuse me, Sumner did not care. He did what he wanted. Sounds like it. No. It sounds like if he's got that much that on his rap sheet that he just got away a lot. It really does. Now, there's not a whole lot of evidence on him, but it he is the considered by police to be the most likely suspect. But they're mm-hmm. not really still not releasing a lot of information. This was literally last year, so they're still working on that. Unfortunately, he has died, so they they can't talk to him, and they I don't know if they have any DNA after him on file. I don't know, but you know, there's only so much that can be done at that point for investigation. Mm-hmm. John Senior died without ever knowing what happened to his daughter. Molly's mm-hmm. sister Heather has said that she will fight until her dying day to find out who this person was and what happened to her sister. And that's mostly the end of the case. Uh, I'm going to get into how they got away with it a little bit, and then I'm going to go back a little to talk a little bit about Molly's legacy, which mm-hmm. she's left behind. Because mm-hmm. I feel like that's important. Yeah. So the police waited three hours before reporting a missing child. Yeah. Her parents didn't even know she was missing for three hours. And I feel like the... Her boss was on top of it. Her boss was on top of it, although I'm weird. I'm wondering, maybe he thought the police would call her parents? He didn't call her parents. I feel like him calling police was smart. The police didn't jump fast enough. The police did not. They assumed she was just some 16-year-old. I feel like they took... gone off to play hooky, and it wasn't worth it. I feel like they took good steps later on. They did. Once they got got it, I think they got it. But they initially really fucked up. They really flooded the case. Like, the first... Like, just send the guy the first out there 24 to walk hours, around. The first, yeah. like, 12 hours, they really flubbed up. And yeah. we know the first 72 hours are critical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although, honestly, you know, who's to say that people were out looking for her, like, the day of. That's so true. who's to say if she hadn't already been killed at this point? I don't want to, you know, like, speculate. 
but it's possible she did not survive long Did afterwards. they ever figure out the exact cause of death? Because they only had partial remains. I don't think they did. They only had 26 bones. Yeah. yeah. Like, when you find bones at that point, you can't really figure out Because I'm wondering... Do you know what the bones were? Because I'm also curious if they think that she got placed there after. That's possible. I'm not sure if they know that. They definitely know homicide. No t- cause of death could be determined, I don't think. Yeah. Because yeah. they only had... They're so handle. little. Anyway, so th- how they got away, three hours waiting. Scene completely compromised. Yeah. Because, again, they flubbed it. Three hours of people going in and out of this beach, you know, kicking up sand, kicking up dirt. The mom, you know, went and sat on the chair. If there were yeah. any fingerprints in the chair, those are probably gone. And it's already hard enough with a scene that's mostly sand. They probably water. moved around the stuff that she had too. Because you know when you're kind of like, use it. what's what's over here, what's happening, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. No one knew it was a scene. Yeah. And the false leads, hundreds of false leads, claiming to have seen Molly and that she was a runaway, wasted time and resources because they had nothing. So they yeah. had to look up all, follow up on all these leads. They lacked DNA evidence. It was outside. The scene was destroyed. There was so little. Anything Remains outside it. it's really hard. Really hard. I like. I had trouble not writing down like, commit your crimes outside. I guess because like, you know, it's there's a lot. The forensic science has come a long way, but there's still, if it's outside, especially in a high traffic area, if it rains the next if day, it rains all your evidence gone. is washed away. Yeah. Scratch a tree, y'all. Scratch a tree. Leaves your shoes. Move a rock. Something. Make, Make an obvious like disturbance. Yeah, disturb the scene. Many suspects, all gross, as we've covered, mm-hmm. all with connections to this or similar cases, weirdly all look like the police sketch. All of them, except for Randy. And weirdly all just out and about when just all, out and about. all these people had priors. All, pretty much all of them had priors. I'm not sure Randy did. Rodney, I'm not sure how connected he was considered to the Holly case at the yeah. time. And he, he techni- I don't think he had any priors outside of that. But also, think about it. All of them either, this either could have been prevented if someone had paid, that's another story, history going ignored. Most of these suspects had a history. If that had been better paid attention to, if people were following up on that, if it was one of these suspects, because again, we don't know, yep. Molly Bish might still be alive. Or if it were, if, it, if Rodney were involved and they had the ability to, you know, get the evidence to convict him for this, Crystal could still have been alive because he went on to brutally murder her. And yeah. even if he wasn't involved in Molly's case, he was involved in something creepy. Yes. I will cite you back to the hair accessories. The creepy bag of hair accessories that are for children. Mm-hmm. We're talking like butterfly clips, little bows. Like, he was like a 50-year-old man and Crystal was like 39. Yeah. They were, no. Why? No. Don't need them. <laughs> Some men just need And to- again, several suspects with connections to the murder, but... It, all of the evidence was circumstantial. They yeah, had nothing. Right. So I want to pretty much that's all I have for her, for how they got away with it. Uh, because there's so little evidence, it's hard to say how they got away with it. I guess it's possible that they moved her body because there is so little of her remains left. Yeah. Which makes me think maybe. And they aren't able to determine cause of death, so it's possible. I don't even know if they know if dismemberment was, pos- was positive. Mm-hmm. It's, there's so little evidence of that. Here's the thing, y'all. Never help anyone unless there's witnesses around. Never help. Yeah. We don't help. Huh. Never. In this world, it's yeah. kill or be killed. It was her job, so it makes sense. But also, like, people around, please. Like, like they let just a 16-year-old girl alone somewhere. Like, I just feel like somebody else should have been. There's, like, another lifeguard. Somebody else. That just seems wrong to leave, like, a 16-year-old alone. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy system, buddy system. Buddy system. There is always the opportunity to be taken advantage of. Some people are more vulnerable. Especially, be... they sought her out because she was vulnerable and alone, and they knew she would feel obligated to help. Yep. So that's most of the oh, case, yeah. but I want to talk a little bit about some of the legacy Molly left behind. Mm, so totally. her family, you yeah. would think something like this would just destroy a family, and you I honestly, got stronger, I wouldn't blame. They? I would not blame them for just curling up into their house and never coming out again, but no. They put everything into not only finding her, but making sure this never happened to somebody else. Mm. They provided thousands upon thousands of identification kits for families in New England to use to get identification information for their kids. So, like, 
recent photos because they had trouble finding a recent good like clear photo of Molly yeah. to use. Recent photos, hair color, weight, eye color, you know, height, things that you can use to find your kid. Yep. Family had trouble, I've said they had trouble finding this information from Molly, and you don't want to be even wasting minutes at the beginning of something like this. Yeah. And mm-hmm. these kits would have information that would be helpful for getting their children's pictures out there and be able to identify in them should the worst happen. Just get that information out as soon as possible. I don't know if you guys as parents did this, but like... As parents? No, you guys as parents. You, yeah, it's, it's like you said, you Just, guys as parents. No. Gotta be clear. You know, you, the kids you, you have, guys the parents. kids that you definitely have. <laughs> yes. But your but parents no, are uh, uh, through Your parents. My parents. I don't know if your parents did this. There you go. But my parents, uh, through the uh, service that does the school photos, mm-hmm. you can get a card with your kid's photo, the recent photo from the school picture, in on the little business card. It's like a business card that you fit in your wallet. Oh, yeah. With like, oh yeah. Yo, your parents did this too? Yeah. We had them... I think they, I don't know if they stopped doing them because obviously I don't have any super younger siblings, but they would do that every year. I think you opt into it. But yeah, we got one every year. I think I don't been, think I have that. Um, Maybe it's just like up. around, I don't know. I know that like. Well, you guys are also in all New Hampshire. Yeah. yeah. When I was, I, was I lived in Michigan different. at the time. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know Why? if it's different for the state. <laughs> you were the third kid, whatever. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> We've had enough. No, but like, oh my God. But yeah. Do you like some something similar to that of like having a photo of like a little card with a photo, a recent photo that's clear, and then you can see the whole the whole child's face with all the like information, like height, weight, color, eye uh, coloring, eye color, hair color, all the information, so you can just whip it up. I mean, Dad kept had one in his wallet from when I was in eighth grade, and I was like, mm-hmm. dude, I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> but like, you could whip it out whenever you needed to, and like, have you seen this specific kid? And, like, people didn't have that for their kid at this time. This was, like, 2000. They also set up the Molly Bish Foundation, which is all about protecting children from crimes like these. They helped bring the Amber Alert to Massachusetts. I feel like we always, because we grew up a little bit later than this, we kind of was just, at least I did, I assumed that the Amber Alert was just, like, something that we're like, okay, we're all doing it, like, all at once. Like, we all agreed. But you had to bring yeah. it state to state to state. Like, it was not standardized when it came out. Which is so dumb. Thing which is you. wild. And they, they brought it to Massachusetts, and, and they had to, like, they put it in place so that if this happened, like, if they had that at the time, they'd be like, white Chrysler, Molly Bish, blonde hair, 16. Yeah. Go. Like, everybody would have been looking for a white Chrysler. My heart always drops when I see those on my phone. And then they have alert. Yeah. 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 I don't want to, like, 13. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, I don't get them much, but when you do, it's like, It happens oh so infrequently, God. luckily, but still. I it's a great system to have in place. Mm-hmm. And they've also used that to set up, to help fund or help push legislation for protecting children, crimes against children, abductions, etc. They also set up the Molly Bush Center for the Protection of the Children and the Elderly, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. not only helps... Mm-hmm prevent things that happen to Molly Bish to happen to others. But I feel like these also honor her dream because she wanted to work with kids. Aww. Oh, man. And she never Probably had... part of the reason she took that job. Honestly, probably. And That's it so never sad. happened. It's very yeah, sad. Like people really just it's literally people. the best yeah. people. Because those are the people that are more willing to put themselves out there to be kind and helpful. And then they just get taken advantage of because of that. We don't, we're not kind and helpful anymore. No. And we're hardened. Society, no, but, like, my dad has said stuff where it's, like, um, as uh, someone who came over from Vietnam, who was, like, a kind of a hard time trusting people. But especially, like, now. That's fair. He'd be, like, don't help anyone directly if you're by yourself. Always say, oh, I can't do anything, but I will go and get help for you. Yeah. So you can bring other people with you so you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like everybody knows that the 10 buddy thing. Like, he used to yeah. do that all the time. He would pretend he was injured, and then he needed help. Safety and numbers. And it's a really common ruse because people feel bad, and they feel also, they feel safe knowing that someone is, like, injured. Injured, yeah. Because they feel like, oh, they can't hurt me. They're, they're, they're injured. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they're not. And you don't they're weakened. Them. They're not. Yeah. Never trust anybody. Ever, ever. That actually, that's one more thought before I end that, is that, um, Ma- Maggie actually left her there that day, felt safe leaving her alone the day after she saw the car because there was a sand delivery truck in the parking lot. And I guess they left shortly after. And she felt safe leaving her there because she was like, There's at least they person. won't be alone. So that's really unfortunate. 
And like I said, the, the murder of Molly Bish is still technically unsolved. They are still getting leads and they're still looking, but I believe either three out of four, at least two out of four of these main suspects are dead. So if it was them, we'll never get a confession or justice. Well, thank you so much for coming to our table of disappointment. I hope you uh, feel very full of disappointment after that. I'm full. I certainly so do. So full. Full of rage, too. Full of rage and disappointment. Rage, disappointment. rage was our side dish. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, wow. I hope you, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but mm -hmm. I hope y'all listen to that. Yeah. I'll help you with your chair on the way out. Thank Scoot it so back much. for you. Thank you. <laughs> Scoot it back. Take a stretch. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.